Of course, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Fold again. I know it's annoying. So if you've heard this before, then please skip ahead. But I'm going to talk about Fold again because Resident Advisor put up a little review of Fold, uh, the 24-hour nightclub in London that I went to over the weekend. I had an amazing time. I fucking enjoyed it. Um, I can't wait to go back again. I'm probably not going to go back anytime soon. Maybe because I'm, I'm due to go to Berlin next month, end of uh, the end of September. I'm going to Berlin, so I'm kind of trying to save a bit of money for that. Um, so it might be October the next time I go, but you know these things usually change. I'll probably get excited again and get hyped up and go again. The review on Resident Advisor was really good and really kind of pointed out a lot of the things that I was kind of talking, thinking about as well. But I thought um, I kind of wanted to speak about a lot, of, kind of a few topics that were pointed out in the article. I'll kind of get up here on the screen so you guys can see. If you guys, if you're not watching this on YouTube and you're listening via the audio podcast, I'll obviously link this article in the show notes. But it's a Resident Advisor review of the opening of Fold in London. So. I'm going to click on it now. Hopefully you guys see it on the screen now. Da, 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 da. Oops, and put my microphone back in here. Okay. Yeah, this microphone dropped out of the arch again. So annoying. All right, so quick to back in there. Done. So, um, fold opening in London. Um, it, uh, article on Resident Advisor, a review written by, who's written it by? By Sam Davis. So check it out. So is this new 24-hour club, the venue that Capital has been crying out for? An article on Resident Advisor. What Londoners want is what other club uh, global cities seem to be in, have in space. The feeling of raving freely in a professional nightclub. In addition to a number of venues closures um, and Hackney's regressive, retrogressive uh, licensing policy, the city's problems extended to commercially successful venues that leave dancers feeling disillusioned by paying over the odds for a largely soulless experience. Illicit rev culture maintains a ghostly presence, but it can never offer the safety and comfort of a properly equipped space, which is, a, which is kind of you know, that's a good point to kind of like um, stop on and kind of pause a little bit. This That's a good point that I've been kind of saying a lot about, right? Like, we do have some good clubs around. We do have some good venues. But for the most part, you do have to pay over the odds. Um, you can't exactly turn up and get a ticket. You don't have to, even if you do try to get a ticket, you're going to pay over the odds, right? The kind of like E1, the LWE, the print works, those kind of places are charging a, a lot of money for you to see DJs. A lot, some of them do kind of get in high caliber acts and the space is actually super amazing and stuff. So you having to have to cover those kind of costs, whatever it may be. But for the most part, it's just too much money for raving, especially if you've been to actual um, cities in Europe that are geared towards clubbing, such as Amsterdam and Berlin. You can go see some of the best DJs that you want for less than 20 euros, right? And these are in some of the best clubs uh, in the world. So the fact that London has um, a problem with nightlife in general because clubs are closing down, but it also has these spaces that charge over the odds is a little bit annoying. And the article continues. Um, Seb Glover and Lasha Georgiliani, Georgiliani, co-founders of East London's new 24-hour fold club, know this only too well. They said, we wanted to capture that freedom of expression that you get in places like Berlin, Amsterdam, Glover told me. Both also mentioned clubs in Tbilisi and Tokyo and Nigeria's Africa Shrine wants a spiritual home of fellow Kutia's inspiration, which is actually amazing to hear. Once Fall's first dance was in full swing on Saturday, it was impossible to escape the feeling of having somewhere slipped outside of London. Of somehow slipped outside of London. The party began at midday with DJs from the range of club local nights, revived her dimension in the global roots, playing all afternoon. Though the head count barely reached double figures until nightfall. At that point, an infectious atmosphere descended, mixing giggly excitement with uh, liberating abandon, a feeling London has, has long overdue. Which is interesting to hear, so it was quite empty in the beginning, but got four towards the end. Um, well, in the afternoon, it was quite um, empty, which makes more sense, because it, it had to be a real nutcase to turn up at Fold at 12pm in the afternoon. But I guess, you know, if you're about that life, you're about that life. Um, diversity, surely London's greatest quality, was affected in the Fold crowd. The later it got, the more skin became visible. The club's locker system allowed ravers to change into the type of outfits that would stand out on the tube. This, coupled with the photo ban, meant people were free to really let loose. Which is interesting, because I didn't, I didn't think of it that way, clubbers. I, usually, um, ravers uh, that I've known, or people that I've seen whenever I go out, they usually wear the kind of like, you know, the whole part of it is the kind of the, the shock factor of going on the tube and wearing a, a gag what do you call it, a ball gag and the whole, you know I mean, the whole holster and straps and shit. That's the whole shock effect of like actually traveling on a tube with it and going into a club. I guess some people just want to cover up or, you know, avoid any hassle from uh, lads and shit on the street and just go into a club. Um, the local system, like I mentioned previously, is absolute, such a great idea. Uh, it's maybe a little bit overcharged in, in terms of the pricing wise. I think it's like, I think they said it was £7 for the lock and £10 deposit, right, overall. 
So you end up getting what three quid back or something? I don't know how that works out. My maths is fucking shocking, but it might be a little bit over um over the top, but again, maybe just to make sure people give back their locks and whatever so they can get the money back and the keys and stuff. But overall the lockers is such a great idea. Especially considering that most clubs that I've been to or most places, because I've been pickpocketed a couple of times when I've been to a few of those kind of like um secret venue warehouse parties, right? Um, so it's nice to kind of go somewhere where you can kind of stash your stuff and not feel like you've got you're gonna be in danger of losing anything. And it continues. Uh, Glover and George Yolani have waxed lyrical over the club's state of the art lighting, sound, and sound, both of which were superb in the night. The space itself is simple and intimate. Clubbers enter through a door courtyard before climbing the stairs to a dance floor. There's one floor big enough for a few hundred people, which was a buzz from midnight onwards, uh, though never overcrowded. There are plans to open a second room downstairs, which is fucking awesome. It's flanked on one side by a bar, which was great really easy to get to um the bartenders were super cool really quick um with just getting you your drinks and just really friendly overall and then to and then the door to the outside terrace was really nice too you kind of get a view of um all the kind of factories and the trains um outside of the of the warehouse really industrial kind of feel the courtyard is a welcoming entrance but the terrace's easy access made it a popular spot especially in the earliest morning sunlight even at its best the biz the club was easy to navigate the security Glover told me had been handpicked from years of working in events, which was nice because they were all chill. Uh, I didn't hear of anyone being turned away, but the door policy is meant to be more stringent than at, that at most other like London clubs with bouncers instructed to make decisions based on conversation with punters. Each member of staff I encountered was friendly and helpful. A startling 21 names were crammed onto the lineup, making some slots feel like teasers. If a few ravers were uncomfortable with the rapid switches, though the intention was to showcase the ample talents available to the bookers. Many people have come away with new discoveries. My pick was ear to the ground Gareth Wild, who played an hour of transcendent techno at, at around 3 a.m. Elsewhere, there was a few inappropriate moments, including what sounded like a bling era hip hop cut. But my lasting memories are gorgeous stretches of trance around sunrise, G dance, which is one of my favorites too, that I heard, and the zippy snatches of hardcore that I followed up soon after Body Hammer. Yeah, Body Hammer was awesome. Um, hearing hardcore for two, one hour was fucking great. On a night so filled with promise, I felt obliged to look to TV problems, but there was none to notable of notable impact. Toilet queues were constant and the bar's free water supply did run out once or twice. The certain members of the crowd, perhaps from 6 a.m. influx of walk-ins were reminders that it's still uh, pushy in London. But that's standing, that's what you're going to get in London. But overall, everyone was smiling and chat was flying between different friend groups. It's hard not to get carried away with false potential. There's already talk of a uh, Bassanini showcase and an in-house label. We're not here to try and save London's nightlife in any way, said Glover. So far, uh, thanks for, to, a, to a night nobody will forget in a hurry. We've been given a taste of what's possible. They're not here to save London's nightlife, but they're gonna, they, they're fucking going to. They, there's no doubt they're going to. This approach, right, again, I'm just, I think I've mentioned it in a few of my videos, you know, I'm kind of petitioning myself to be the next uh, London nightlife mayor, so vote for me when the votes come out again. Um, but this approach, right, I'm not sure who's impossible for it, I'm not sure if the if the Hackney, I mean, sorry, if the um, Newham Council got involved in it, but this is what you need, right? This is what you need. If you're a council and you're looking for a little bit more of income to come in, or you're looking for Canning Town to become a little bit more of a hub to kind of like attract younger people to come in and uh, take out leases and rent homes homes and shit and give back into the economy buy in, buy into shops and whatever open up bars and cafes around the area this is what you need to give them you need to give them something right and i always had the my kind of idea even before i heard about this club which was kind of really eerie was kind of a copy on what amsterdam are doing amsterdam have given i think 10 clubs a 24-hour license that 24-hour license um is kind of uh i forgot what the term is but they kind of um it's, a, it's an agreement with the council when you get a 24-hour license that you're going to be extra stringent and extra careful to make sure that your punters and people around the club are safe and you're going to make sure you look after the space in general. So it's a kind of agreement that we're going to give you a 24-hour license, but you have to be extra, extra careful with everyone that kind of comes in here. So you have to have a really strict door policy. You have to make sure you have all the right safety um, uh, procedures involved in the club. Um, water all that sort of shit make sure you have safe spaces people that are patrolling the arena blah blah, blah whatever it may be to make sure nothing shit happens in there because if it does a license gets revoked but the thing that was actually a real genius uh move on Amsterdam's part was well, most of these clubs are on the outside perimeter of the main city center so they're not near most of the residential housings right so they're kind of away from all the places that people would complain about the noise and if they are and even if they are next to residential places because they've been given a 24-hour license, the council works in tandem with the venue to ensure that they have all the right um, sound insulation to make sure that no one on the outside is affected. And honestly, right, when I walked up to the uh, fold, 
I was right in front of it. Like I was folding up my jacket, putting it into my little um pout into my little um side bag, and I couldn't hear. I could just hear faintly the music, faintly, and it was loud as fuck in there, right? I couldn't hear it outside at all. Nothing. You just hear people talking. Nothing you could hear outside. So they've obviously done a good job of like making sure the sound is perfect and make sure they've insulated the building completely because it's an old factory building, so it obviously had to be completely gutted and completely real done. So it, it did take a long time to get sorted, but they've done it. And they've got it done. I'm sure somebody kind of did in tandem with the council themselves. So it's something that has kind of puzzled me in, in most part because I think the the argument for having warehouse places and clubs in general in kind of built up places like Dawson and Hackney has kind of run its course. I think everyone can kind of agree that that is going to happen, right? There's too much friction. There's too much a clashing of our heads when it comes to the hipsters in Dawson and Hackney and the hipsters when it comes and the people that live in those, in those actual areas, right? And we kind of see, we kind of saw how the residents in Stoke knew and kind of won that battle for the most part, right? And kind of got rid of the clubs and sure, it's just kind of another good example too where most of the clubs are kind of closing at two or maybe one for the most part, even on the weekends. But all we ask is that for the people that do want to go out and have a good time, just give us a spot that we can go to. Give us a spot that we can go to where we know for sure we can stay out until ungodly uh, amounts of hours. And if 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 you can, try and not make it too far. Right? We've got the cause in Tottenham. We've got now, we've got this um, fold venue in Canning Town. If they open up another one in South for everyone that lives in South, because a few people that I met at Fold who came came up from Peckham and, you know, coming up to coming up to, from Peckham to... Coming from Peckham to Canning Town can be a bit annoying. It's a bit far. You kind of have to go back into centre and then come back a bit down to go. It's a bit of a, a ball to get back to South London. But if they open up a space somewhere in South London that people could go to as well, that's similar to the fold, that is what you need, right? That's the kind of next evolution. And you have one in West, you have one in North. So that what, what eventually will happen is that you'll take the strain away from all the built up places in kind of like even in terms of Peckham, New Cross, Dalston, Shoreditch, Hackney. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of... Um, all that pressure that's on those clubs to kind of like, you know, for people going there and the promoters and stuff will kind of be alleviated because you have these places that people can actually go to and get fucked up. And then you kind of, the council kind of get its wish because then you have these bars and nightclubs and that quote-unquote nightclubs that will kind of be open until two but won't have that much of a rowdy clientele in there because all the rowdy heads will kind of go to 24 clubs and the 24 clubs will make sure the rowdy heads behave because if they don't, they'll lose their license. So everyone kind of wins, right? It's a kind of weird agreement. Oh, whistling, Jesus Christ. Hopefully you can't hear that. So it's an agreement that everyone kind of has. Living in this area is horrible. So it's an agreement that everyone kind of has that, it, and it works for everybody in unison. And I'm hoping that Fold um, is kind of an experiment that can kind of prove that these spaces can work if they're done like this, right? If they're placed, if they're put in an area where people can go and let loose, right? I was in there. I saw people actually dressing up, people having a good time laughing do you know what i mean just dancing the absolute heads off like sweating buckets like i did just having an absolute blast right because they knew they were going to be out for as long as they wanted to they can go they can go home right at, right when the thing ended now I, I left exactly when it ended at 12 so you can have the best time as you want and then for the people that i just want to go out and just you know have a drink after work but also want to maybe have a bit of dance you've got those bars and and kind of clubs that you've got in Dawson or whatever they may be they can go and have a good time in and everyone can and it kind of suits everyone in unison because those bars and clubs will end at two or one and these things out of the sticks away from everybody else will end at six or 12 in the morning which is perfect for everyone that um that lives in those areas and everyone that kind of is attending so i think hopefully this is a good experiment again like i mentioned previously i'm hoping that everyone that attended and is going to attend in the future kind of takes it upon themselves because i think again it's a personal responsibility thing it's that whole adage about if you if you sweep your own like front lawn right and your neighbor sees you sweeping your front lawn he will then get inspiration to sweep his and then in unison whole community be clean right so it's the idea of like you sweep yours first and then everyone else will kind of follow suit so i think if we all take personal responsibility we'll take um um, ownership of this space and say look fold is our nightclub right fold is a place that we want to go to and have a good time and we want to let loose in if we all take care of each other we will make sure everyone's safe we don't make sure everyone's being a dickhead no one's kind of being too touchy no one's kind of interrupting someone's space or being annoying and shit and we call people out we make sure no one's doing anything stupid on the dance floor right that's going to make sure that everyone's safe and nothing dumb stuff, nothing happens. Good. We don't want anything stupid happening for some police investigation to take place or council to review the license to kind of like revoke stuff and take off and kind of limit the time. No one wants that. We want to just make sure that it's legit and it's safe. The, obviously, the owners and the venue staff are going to do part of their job, but it's also up to us attendees to make sure that we do our job too to make sure that place succeeds. Because um, as cliche as it, as it might seem, the community is basically the most important part of that club or all clubs in general right 
um, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a bar, whether it's a theatre, the people that actually come to your your place, um, your establishment on a regular basis who kind of are going to spread the word, who are going to tell their friends, like I have been talking a rabbit on about it all week. They're the ones that are going to be, uh, the ones that are going to kind of hold you down. They're going to ensure that your place kind of succeeds or fails in the, in the in the other case, right? You, I'm sure we've all been to places or clubs that have kind of flopped because they, they were welcoming of the wrong people inside the spaces, right? So, so it can be annoying. There might be occasions where you'll go to fold or you might get turned away. Um, but don't take it personally, right? Just just look at it in the long run. You eventually will get in there. There's loads of nights. They're going to be putting on a night every weekend, I'm sure, uh, once they kind of get iron out the kind of uh, the kinks and the kooks or the kind of errors in the first place. There'll be a night they'll be putting on every single weekend. So don't take it too personally. Just look at the kind of the long picture, the long image or what's going to happen in the future and, and know that overall we finally got a club that we can kind of go to and rave for 24 hours. So I thought that 